Hello guys and welcome back to number nine farms today i'm going to be making some candles and i'm going to take you along with while i make some um here i have some that are already um poured and if you can see these really good they have like the white bloom on them that is natural for beeswax um a lot of people always say what's wrong with them um there's nothing wrong with them they're just 100 percent pure but this the little hen and then this one here is the um, the bees flying all around the side. And then this was one of my newer ones that I got. It has a bear on one side and a deer on the other. Then I've got like the uh, honey pot. Um, I've got a lot of molds, so I'm gonna get a lot more done today. Um, the, the owl, and look at this cute little, they call him the bandit bear um because he's stealing the honey and then these here these are one of my favorites to pour because they're really easy and then i do sell a lot of the lighthouses so the the lighthouse is a nice one and then i have the pumpkins little pumpkin set so that's what i have poured right now i have a show next weekend so i'm gonna get a bunch poured today got my wax melting I let it slow because I had to get some of the wicks in and over here it down this whole thing I've got all the molds let me show you so you can see all the molds and the wax is melting right now um let's see what else can I tell you about it and then this one the bottom hasn't been done so that one will get done I'll show you that step on how I do that and anytime, like when I get down to the bottom, sometimes there's like a little bit of junk inside the um, wax, which is normal because it sometimes when you're filtering it, it doesn't get everything out. And if not, you can pour into like some of these empty molds, um, like for a little one ounce beeswax um, cakes. And you can pour inside those and then that way you could um, catch what you have in there. And a lot of times if you get water in there too, the water um, will mess the molds up too. Not not the molds, but the candle. So um, let's get started. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get, um, I've already got one of the um, over here ready to pour. Let me show you. If I can get it there, it's over here. But I said, I put, I put the deli paper down so that, um, that way if i make a spill i can pull my wax right up that works really good and i have all my supplies inside one little um box right here so inside this little box is i have all the supplies the long needles the upholstery needles all the uh parts for the tops of the wick so extra um rubber bands and Let's see, a different size wicks. I always use um, the 6.0 or 60 ply weather and then the 2.0, 2 dash o, whatever it is. And let's get started. Woohoo! Here it is, the big, the other one, 2.0 wick. So I label all my molds. This is something I like to tell everybody. Um, and I make sure they're always stored upside down because um, dust can get in them and you can see they're got, they actually have dust on them right now. Um, and it, I always write on the bottom what the number of the mold is, the wick and um, how much wax it holds because that way you, you know how much to charge like per ounce. And here lately, um, everything has went so sky high, even the molds have went up. Like, so some of the ones, like I went to pay, paid, uh, say 40 bucks for, now they're like 60 bucks. So, all right. Okay. For the first mold here, this is a rooster. And there we go. And if you like, so have, feel like you have air in it or something, you can tap the sides and that way it'll get all the air out. So first thing I'm going to do now, I'm going to pour the Buddha mold 
Um, or you want to get the 60 ply for this one, and I kind of like roughly guesstimate on how much wick I'm going to need. It's better to have more than less because that right there, I've got it, and I was like, oh wow, why didn't I put in extra wick? And find the hole in the bottom. This is how I do it. Now, everybody has their own way of doing things. And this is just, and then I go in and I pull, and I find that it's harder to use the longer wicks. I mean, not wicks, um, needles for making the um, wick. But I like it like this. And then I just grab one of the, um, right here. This way, you can sit it right inside there and line it up because you want to make sure it's straight. Okay, sit it on the table and remind everybody while you're doing them to not run and stuff. All right, guys, so we're going to pour the Buddha, which is one of my favorites. And if you, when you're moving it around, make sure it gets um, straight again. And I just go ahead and pour right on. Whoop. It's the table is probably leaning some. Not exactly straight. Or maybe I just filled it up too much. <laughs> I'm going to do the large Christmas tree here. And maybe I won't go overboard this time. There we go. Perfect. Of all the little craft things I do, this is one of my favorite things to do is to pour candles. And unfortunately, I don't get to do it every day, but at least I get to do it. And that's a good thing. So, and this is a little turtle. And this is going to be for Miss Judy. Thank you, Judy. Thank you so much for buying it from my Etsy store. I'm going to sit that there for the four. That's a tiny one. And it, um, and then like this one here, this one has got some issues sometimes to pour. This one is like a little cylinder um, B, kind of like a scap, but yet not. It's the shape of a hive. What did I do with my needle? I already lost it. Oh like scissors you just kind of misplace it that's what we used to say in the scrapbook world you didn't uh, you didn't lose it you just misplaced it and this is how I pull the needle out that one fell These are really soft molds. And that's why I say they're they're not as uh, good a molds as the yellow ones. At least I don't think. But since this is one of those ones with issues, I try to make it where it won't be so loose. It needs to be tighter around the wick so it doesn't leak out the bottom. It always leaks. Alright, so this is one I just now took out of the plastic bag that I bought um, this year. And it's the wood grain um, cylinder mold. So I would always take and um, write down the uh, 
number for it, which is right on the plastic bag. 981. PM 981. And I know that it's the 60 ply. And I would have to look it up on the website to find out how much wax it uses. So, and this is the wood grain cylinder mold. So we'll see that one when it's done. Cylinder. It's hard to write on these because it's wax. It's kind of like a soft waxy feeling. All right, so I have a bunch ready. Wax is ready. So I'm gonna go ahead now and we are going to pour. So first we have the wood grain cylinder here. And I'm going to do the littler ones once uh, some of the wax has gone down. I did some dripping. I don't have a good uh, angle right there like that. Yep. I'm slacking here today. The tree. Okay. And then this is the tree cylinder mold. So it's like a pine. Now that the wax has gone down some, it can do the e littler ones easier. And this was the uh, morel mushroom. This little guy. It's really tiny. Mm -hmm. That's okay. And then this is that one that's super tiny and always leaks. Yep, done. And all those pieces I can scrape right back up and use. So... And then these are the little turtles. And you don't want to hit your other moles when you're doing it, just like I did. Well, that's when you don't want to be moved off. And you can take all this off and put it right back in there. Okay, done. And I still have some wax left, so I'm going to put some more um, wicks in. And I'll be right back. All right, so this first one we're gonna do right here is gonna be the big fern. And I'm gonna go from this direction right here and pour. Okay, ta-da! Colby came out of his room and hit the table. Thank goodness they had already waxed over. Roosters out there crowing. And this is the um, the one with the bear and the deer on the front. Okay, and then I got just enough probably to do, this is a turkey. I probably got just enough to do that one, or maybe the cylinder, I can do the cylinder. This is the beeswax um, cylinder. I just don't wanna add a lot of trash because the trash gets down to the bottom. Mm. There we go. Oof. Yeah, there's just enough probably I can do that turkey, but I'm not going to push it. All right, so I'll go ahead and make some more wicks up and I'll be back. Um, This is one of the uh, pieces of wax that I rendered down. And you can see where I put it in. A, um, This is the crock pot. So I put the wax that I need to, uh, I put it like in a sock or a pillowcase, depending on how much I have. And then it will um, run out of the pillowcase or the sock because it's closed up and then it runs out and then it'll form like what I put it in water inside a crock pot 
And then if I have larger ones, I'll do them in the roaster or I'll do them in um, metal pans, just depending on what size, how much wax I have. And what I'll do with this now is I'm gonna, I just wanted you to see it and I'll go ahead and put this in. These are ones I just poured before and use them, put them in here to make more wax. And you can break that up if you want, but it'll go ahead and melt down. And let's see, so that, here's a big piece. See, like this one would have been done in the roaster because it's the same size. So I have like some old roasters um, that you wouldn't want to like cook in anymore. And, but it's so cool, isn't it? of another one from the roaster. So Bruce comes in and what he does is, um, is he takes a chisel, he uses like a box or something, and a chisel and a hammer to, um, he just he breaks them apart for me into little pieces so they can go into the wax melter. And I've got several sizes of the wax uh, melters. Like this little one here. So if you didn't want to do a lot, um, but this right here is the one I use all the time. And this is one of these, uh, I don't know what it's called exactly, but it's a burner, but it has certain ones that it can take and certain ones that it can't take. But uh, this is a Faberware, and I think I got this one at Walmart one time. I've had that a really long time now, probably six, seven years or more. I don't know, probably maybe seven, seven or eight years. Um, but this right here is a stainless steel pot, and once I once I used it for the wax, it pretty much has to stay, it, it does stay, have to stay for wax. I mean, because it's basically trashed as far as like using it for anything else. Um, but uh, it works really good. And anytime, like if you have a, if you have one of your candles that say you dropped it, cause I, since I'm going back and forth to the markets and I'm setting them up and unsetting them down and setting them back up and wrapping them back up, um, they have a lot of travel on them. Whereas, um, like if I was, had them in a shop, they wouldn't have as much travel on them. So say I, you know, dropped one on the ground at the market. Well, if it didn't get like a lot of trash in or anything from like the asphalt or the, or the concrete or road or whatever, wherever you're at setting up parking lot, um, then you could, you could just go ahead and put that whole candle right back in here into your mold, into your wax and then just pick the wick out with like a, um, a chopstick or a bamboo skewer. So uh, that's something else that you would you can do, um, do. And I always use the um, wax sheets, the um, deli sheets is what they're called. So if you wanna buy any of those, just look up jelly sheets. Um, Cause they, they really do help, especially when you're pouring your candles. Um, Let's see what melt melts. I'm gonna go ahead and put some wicks in again. And this right here is a, one of the big um, hexagon cylinders. So it has little hexagons inside for looks like a beehive. And it, this one here, I've got the 2.0 wick, which is odd because it is a smaller candle and um, or circumference. But it's, sometimes it's just it's like you like the turkey said it had to be the 6.0 wick. And you're thinking, you know, that turkey is really small. That's the six. Um, the 60 ply. I don't know why I keep saying 6.0. So, and I'll uh, anyways, that's what it says, the turkey. So we'll see how it looks. Cause I hadn't poured it before. So what I, what I do is I, after I sell a certain amount of candles, cause since the molds are so expensive, then I can justify buying um, more molds. But if not, 
then I don't buy the molds. And then I'll go ahead and get one of these things here. And uh, put it on the wick. And we'll get ready to pour. All right, so let's go ahead and pour again. Wax is melted. I'm gonna start off with this little um, turkey. The wax smells so good. All right. And it probably has just enough to do this one. And this one's kind of funny. Um, sometimes this one has, uh, like it leaves an open spot. And I've, you know, it's one, one thing that's really cool about it too is that I, I filled in with the rest of it. And it kind of fold, goes around the side so it looks like drips. Because it, since it's already, it starts to shrink in while it's getting dry. And as it shrinks in and then you go back and fill it, it fills up the wax around the outside. That's pretty cool. Well, some of it's still down there. So this is the tree, the little tiny tree. So, I think I might just make it. I'm not sure on this one. Ooh. It's going to be close. I think it's too big. It's not enough. I'm going to have to uh, do something small. Do these little ones. And I've also got a, another one over there that's the one pound. Because a lot of times we, after a while it just starts building up with just stuff in the, the wax. Sometimes you'll see a bee leg, stuff like that. Anything like from the hive itself. So there's a lot of little stuff in that one. So I wanted to get all that out. I'll be back. All right, so we got the wax almost ready again. And I went ahead and got all the um, wicks pulled except for one on this uh, pillar. I mean, not pillar. Um, taper mold. And this one, you want to just measure your wick size. And when you're, you want to use one of the long opposed tree type needles. And this is where you want to make sure when you're pouring it, I mean, not pouring it, when you're pulling your wick through, which I just have those there so they don't fall through, but we'll fit, we'll change that. And just want to go ahead and pull it right on up. Be careful because it will come out the other end and you don't want to poke your eye out. And I just pulled way too far that time. It can be very tricky. But you want to make sure your wick, you have enough of the wick pulled through because it will fall off the needle. And I think it just did. Yep. Told you it was aggravating. But, uh... It works though, cause I think I've cut this one a little too short is the problem. Yep, that's what it is. Not the first time and I'm sure it won't be the last time. So you just wanna head, go ahead and get the, uh, make sure that y'all can see. Cause um, I'm not the best video photographer, for sure. Okay. Mm. 
there we go. And same thing, you want to clip it so that you don't, and then when we get ready to pour this one, I'll show you what the little tricks are. All right, so the wax is ready now. All right, so got you. I'm pouring off some of it so, so it's not so much in the uh, pan here. Pitcher. Okay. So the first thing, let me see. Got to guess you got to be able to see, right? Okay. So you just want to pull back and you go ahead and pull, pour right in. Whoop, there we go. And now to hold your candle in place. And you want to make sure it's centered. one nope that was too much and then so forth so And you could do other things like wrap them with um, clothespins, whatever is easiest for you. This just seems to be the, what works for me. Just want to make sure they're centered. And then pour. Oops catch you off guard every time here. This one here is wanting to move. All right, so I'll bring you back. Hey right, guys, so my phone died, but I wanted to show you that I was able to get out Judy's little turtles look at that so they're already done and i'm going to take uh something else out of the mold let me um the wax is over there melting so i have look look at that ta-da and you see i just did these so it because um Let's see, sometimes when they, whoop, I'm trying to go too fast here. You don't want to pull your wake out, so you got to go really slow. Pulling it out. Look at that, and you can see the different colors and very, let's see if you can see it. Um. But see how it's lighter right there? That right there is where it's not dry all the way. And this is where it is dry, the thinner part. But look at that. It's perfect. So, um, I got to pour another turtle. I got another cylinder mold with the bees on it. And I have the skull right here. So, let's pour that. And... What's fun is that since um, my Etsy store has been back open and anytime when people buy a candle, this is what I get to do. Because other than that, I'm working on other things and I would not get to make the candles. So it's my excuse to be able to make candles. And I say, well, Bruce, I got to make candles today. Can't do that. There's that B cylinder. 
Okay. And now there's still, there's a bee leg right there in, oh my gosh, I w let me see if I can show y'all. Cause I told you about it, getting a bee leg. You can clearly see the bee leg. Alrighty, this one is the White House. Okay guys, so I'm back, it's the next morning and I had to wait to get to use the phone because my husband <laughs> um, has it. Uh, and we uh, only have one phone, but right over here I have my, um, what is it like? Uh, electric skillet. Yeah, electric skillet, electric. Griddle. Um, griddle, yeah. So, anyways, these are the ones I just um, pulled out of the mold, um, waiting. And these are for Judy. Um, and then this one here is oh, one of my favorites. So, what I do is I'll use this to flatten the bottoms in case they need to be flattened. But look how beautiful that one is, the fern. That's just a little piece that come off the mold. Wow. Yeah, the color is beautiful. It does have a good color. And I like that morel. Yeah, the morel. But let's go ahead. I pulled some of them. I wanted to show you how I do that. I just come in here and take this off and pull that. And if like if sometimes if it gets a little tiny hole like that, it really won't matter. Um now sometimes I've had some big holes, but that doesn't happen very often at all. And in fact, I have gotten lots of orders for my Buddha. Um I have gotten like three and four and five at a time to, to build, um, to not build. My goodness, I would be in trouble. You can't carve that for me a little faster? No, but the little kids who come to the market, they, they're very excited um, over them. And they said, did you carve that? Yes. And I'm like, no. no. <laughs> I don't have those skills. But um, wow. look at that one. It's so beautiful. So, and then I just go ahead and cut the wick. Now, you can pre-dip your wicks. That's perfectly fine, and they do say it lasts longer. I just never do. Um, and I haven't had any trouble with them not lasting. So, I use a deli sheet down to once I melt them, just so you can see this. And look, it just, if it has like a little... Um, rough part on the bottom I just push down on here to get it flat because I want it to sit on somebody's table perfectly and that's it and then it'll dry and I will pull it up so let's see what else can I pull show y'all let's do this some um, turkey because I bet this is going to be a two um, person job and I always wrap them back up the molds Put the rubber bands back on and make sure they're aligned. And then I turn them all upside down to store because you don't want any dust to get in them. And uh, I'm so impressed with this one that, let's see, because a lot of times these ones will be a two-person um, pull. Because one person pulls the mold apart and then the other one will, hold on, it's got to come like this. It's got to, because they're kind of like self-sealing. Eh, not too, oh yeah, you're going to have to back him out. Beep, beep. <laughs> All He's right. He's coming. He's coming. I'm not good at holding the camera in. Okay. He, where's his wick at? His wick is, what you're going to have to do is back him out like this and then pull out. Okay. There you go. There you go. <laughs> Boom. I'm a turkey. Look at that, though. Wow. It looks so good. Ooh. It turned out so good. So then I just, the same thing, trim the wick down and um, go ahead and flatten its bottom. And that's about it. I'll, I'll bring y'all back once I um, got them all taken out of the mold. And I will show you what we have. And what we made today or yesterday. Well, guys, I hope you enjoyed uh, pouring some candles with me. And I wanted you to see everything that was finished and see how the, everything turned out. Because I think uh, everything turned out really nice. And I think... Uh, I think Rosie likes them. Wow. 
Yeah, and I love the tapers, how the tapers turned out. And then this one here turned out really good. Um, this one I've had trouble with the, in the past before. And this is the one, like I told you, I take sometimes and if it starts to look like it's got a bubble in the bottom or something, I'll take and pour some more over it. And it does like drips on it. And I tell you, it's the coolest thing. But so, and that's after it starts pulling away from the mold. So it starts shrinking. And then that way you can dump that wax around it. And so it has like an extra layer of drip. So it's almost like the honey's dripping. So, all right, guys. Well, thanks for watching.